Hi, I'm Keith Champagne, the 14th most handsome comic book creator for DC, Marvel, and more companies than you can shake a stick at. I'm a writer, artist, inker, letterer, publisher, and all-around swell guy. Catch me on Instagram at the pretentious Keith Champagne for a better look at what I do. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Keith, when it comes to Punch here, why did you want to make this particular comic series? I didn't want to make this comic series. Okay. I, I you know, I, I used to write a book. I, I wrote the revival of adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters um, a while ago now, probably 15 years ago. And it was a lot of fun. And I did a podcast last year. And what they wanted to talk about was they wanted to do a deep dive into the black belt hamsters. So we, you know, got to talking about it. And I mentioned, like, it was a really fun gig at the time. It was like a uh, breath of fresh air because I'd be writing, like, a DC crossover event, which is very stressful with a lot of notes from different editors and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I get to go off in, in a little corner and, and write an issue with the Black Belt Hamsters, and it was just fun and funny and a good change of pace. And I enjoyed writing humorous. It's fun to find a balance between writing humorous and writing characters that people really care about. So then one of my new paying collaborators, a guy, Rich Stanky, texted me the next day. He's like, hey, if you like doing that kind of book so much, why don't we do one for new paying? Like, let's make our own Ninja Turtles or Black Belt Hamsters book. I didn't need another book right now to do. Like, I have so many other new paying projects that are spinning around. But he got me. He got me thinking about it. And next thing you know, I'm, you know, these characters are coming to life in my head. And, you know, the way that they hunt, like, cryptids like Bigfoot or the tall gray aliens, etc., it just uh, took on a life of its own. And so it became, it jumped the line of other projects and became the book that, you know, I'm really having fun doing. Was it the break you needed, though? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a good break. I have, you know, for me these days, it's about the collaboration more than anything. And I like I like working with Rich. He's a, a really easygoing, nice, funny guy. And he has a great work ethic. So we have fun bouncing stuff back and forth off of one another. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good experience. For sure. And I think that translates to the book. The book's a lot of fun. That's what I noticed about reading it there uh, from what I got to read. I think it, it has a that level of humor that I think is missing in in action comics these days. I'm, I have a warped sense of humor as it is, so it just hits all my funny bones. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Everyone loved like the JLA when uh, Giffen and, and JM were doing it. And, uh, you know, I kind of miss that kind of humor in comics also. And also, no one's making Ninja Turtle style books anymore, which was, you know, back in the 80s, there were a dime a dozen, everyone had their own Ninja Turtles. So we we're like, well, maybe the time is right to do like a new iteration of, of a book like that. Yeah, because I love cryptids. I love the anthropomorphs that you have in the series here. You could say that there's an underlying layer of these characters that you I just didn't get to see yet. Well, yeah, I only sent you the first half, right? Yeah, I know, which, is, which makes me want it. So there you go. <laughs> the fact that you have cryptids and, and anthropomorphs in a comic here why are those characters you needed to put together besides it being the style of the book so that's an interesting uh, question and it's hard to answer too deeply when people haven't read the book yet but they're kind of the same thing and it's a theme that's going to come into play in the book in the, in the second half that you haven't read yet it's mentioned by one of the characters in that you know the punch team which are a bunch of animals that have been you know bionicized and they've been anthropomorphized into these intelligent characters they they hunt cryptids around the world they have a lot more in common with the cryptids than they do with the human beings that have created them and so that becomes a theme you know there's a, a correlation between the two that will eventually make sense as to why these two you know distinct kinds of characters cryptids and and my funny animals are, are interacting at all there's a plan there for sure you have action, you have adventure elements, and you just touched on some of the themes that, that we'll get to see in the entire comic series itself here. Is this just a one-off, or is this a, a, are we looking at a three-issue series? Are we going to see this as a movie eventually? Well, I mean, knock on wood, we'd see it as a movie. So the first issue on Kickstarter coming up, it's 52 pages altogether, which basically is two issues. And I think next year, about mid-year, we'll probably do uh, another you know, double-sized issue like that. So that'll be, you know, a first arc. And then I would like to do a, like a one-shot with a character in the book, Marshmallow, who is a, a cat. He's like our Wolverine, basically. There's some stuff in there to explore with him that I'd like to play with and then probably do another series. I'd also like to, I mentioned this to the artist the other day, I think like this series would play really well with younger readers 
you know, in the in the middle school range or, or what have you. So I'm going to clean up some language in here because I tend to have characters curse. And I'll give it to Scholastic and maybe Paper Cuts and a couple other companies that specialize in that and see if there's a, a market for it out there. You have uh, neurodivergency in the title itself here. Is that included in the characters? No, it's definitely included in the characters. Every character is neurodiverse in a different way. Like one character has Tourette's. Uh, one character uh, suffers from depression. One character has multiple personalities. He's, he's a shark mm. and German shepherd, depending on, on what personality he is at any given moment. You know, they all have these challenges, these neurodiversities that help to form their characters, but also give them something to, to push against or grow against. You know, so there's a there's also a reason for that. I know you don't want to go into spoiler Terry, so I know you're being careful with how you're, what you're saying there, and I completely understand. But I, I think it's something that's needed, and it's something that's great that you're exploring, and, and I'm glad you're doing it in, in the way that you're doing it. So I think it'll be wonderful for those to, to read it, for sure. Sure, and you know, neurodiversity and mental health challenges, I mean, it's so common, yeah. you know, so easily spoken of now. It's not a stigma to it anymore. And, you know, maybe there's a kid out there, someone that has Tourette's, that will read this comic and, and be like, oh, this is actually, you know, okay to have tracks. Yeah. Or, you know, an autistic uh, individual that would read the comic and relate to one of the characters in there. Who knows? I mean, you just hope that, that people resonate with something. Who's the team around Punch? The team of characters or the creative team? Both. We're, we're going to go with both. Actually. Well, the creative team is easy because it's just me and Rich Stanky. Uh, you know, I write it and I letter it and I edit it which is nice because no one can tell me what to do as my own editor. And then Rich uh, pencils, inks, and colors it. Uh, as far as the team, we've got Marshmallow, who was a cat with uh, some real anger issues. We have Kibble slash Sushi, who is the multiple personality disorder, and he's uh, both a German Shepherd and a shark. We've got Crackers, who is a chimpanzee. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Crackers is an orangutan, uh, is autistic. We have uh, Flapjack, who has Tourette's, and he's a lemur. And... Uh, who's the other character? Oh, the chestnut is the other one. He's a team leader. He's a squirrel with OCD. And then uh, they they work with a guy, uh, Professor Coconuts, who's an elephant. He's kind of their, their team. And they have a therapist. His name is Dr. Jaquito, who's their human therapist. And they work with him in between uh, missions. So it's a fun mix of personalities. You know, the way they bounce off of each other is, is half the way that the story builds itself, I guess. That's what I enjoyed, and I'm glad to see that you're putting this together. It's going to be released. I'm sure you have some, some good perks as well, too, in regards to the campaign. Yeah, actually, you know, a lot of the nuts and bolts are there. We've got the, you know, the comics and the different tiers of, of those things. We're going to throw a T-shirt in there. We've got, we'll punch everybody if they want. If you want a free punch for supporting the book, we'll punch you in the gut. <laughs> As a free bonus it's uh yeah it's people should check out the campaign there's original art there's all kinds of good stuff in there so where can we find punch and anything else you want to promote about punch so i mean punch itself will be going live on kickstarter on monday night about eight o'clock i like to do a soft launch on monday nights and it gives my previous backers a chance to to grab the early bird uh, rewards before the general public becomes aware of it on the next day and then uh, you can go to uh, newpainpro.bigcartel.com, which is uh, our catalog of books. And a bunch will be listed on there soon, too. And uh, New Pain Instagram page or my Instagram page, Francis Keith Champagne, uh, is a good place to stay up to date on the things we're doing also.